little smaller and then the bottom one is just a full tray. It doesn't have holes in it. You want about an inch of sample on the top. Some of them is already going to um, fall through. Don't worry about that. And then just spread them. When you shake, you shake five times um, and then you rotate and you do that eight times. So it's two full circles. So two times when you see this, you want to shake enough so that the things move over the sift in the first, second, and third one because they need to get to the bottom as well. Perfect. Okay, rotate. So here's cardboard two. Yeah, we use the cardboard just so that we don't lose any sample because otherwise it's not very accurate either. Cardboard three. And the last one does not need a cardboard because there's a solid bottom. Is your tray and your cardboard and it's tray one, you do the same for tray two, three, and four. So that's what you weigh ahead of time. And we do it every five because it does get wet and gets sticky a little on it. And then the next way for A, D is everything. So it's the tray, the cardboard, plus the sample. And then you just subtract the two from each other and you know exactly how much sample is there. So that's these ones. And then you, to get your total sample, you add all of them up to get the total sample. And then we need the ratios that is on each tray. So you take sample A or one divided by the total times 100. It gives you the percentage of what is on tray one. And for corn, the top one we want between three and 8%. So that's the one that we care most about. So here are the targets that we want to achieve. So we are definitely very high over here. Um, and then we look at the second tray. We want it to be at 45 to 65. So that's just over. And then this one between 20 and 30. And this one less than 5%. So the reason why we were looking at this is um, when we mix our corn silage with other things to make a TMR, um, we do want different particle sizes, but we don't want too much on the top. So for here, it will um, get sorted out so the cows won't eat it. Um, so it's a waste. As well as if they don't eat the top part and there's too much of it, um, they can get ruminal acidosis if it's too much for sorting. Um, so that's why, especially for the top tray, we look at having that three to eight, so it will help with chewing their cut and helping for the room and environment. We have our four trays after we weighed it. Um, just to give you a visual, tray number one has our bigger particles, tray number two has smaller, smaller, and then three has the little sift, and then four is our bottom pen, so you only want very, very small particles on this. So on the top one, we generally want between three and 8%. As you can see, it's a lot of big particles that's going to be on here. Um, so we don't want this too long because then the cow can sort through it and they only eat the little things and it might get them or give them acidosis. 
Um, so we want this to be between that three and eight so that they actually are forced to eat it and it makes sorting a lot less because we don't want to waste this. In our metal tray, um, we want between 45 and 65, so our smaller particles. Um, and here you can see some of the corn kernels, but they are all squashed or nicked. Um, so that's what we want in this tray. Then we go to the third one, a lot of smaller particles. So a lot more of our grain um, should be in this one. And we want this between 20 and 30%. Um, if it's too high in this tray and the bottom tray, it means that our cutting is way too short and our cows might get acidosis um, if we put it in our TMR and um, we have too many small particles. So in the bottom two trays, generally it's your more grains or kernels. Um, the other thing that I forgot to mention is that if we have too much on the long particles, our salad don't pack really well. So that's um, very important for uh, fermentation and packing and um, making good salad. Processing, we're just using a coffee jug because um, you're supposed to do 32 ounces and this is 32 and a half, so it works quite well. So you wanna grab a sample and then you spread it out and you look for whole kernels. In a 32 ounce um, container, we don't want more than two whole kernels. So if it's nicked or a little bit squashed, that is fine. That does not count as a whole kernel. Um, the reason why is whole kernels don't get digested in the cow. They go through the cow and they end up in the manure. And then we lose starch and starch is costing us money. So that's why we do this. Like this kernel, it looks whole, but it is, but it's not. Okay. Right now I don't see anything. Here's two, they're attached to each other. That one has a nick actually. This one does not. So that's definitely one. This one does have a nick on it, so it is, yeah, it's processed. That's fine. Okay. So if you find too many whole kernels, what do we do? The kernel processor needs to be adjusted so that it is a smaller area that they go through so that it actually damage or nick the kernel so that um, we can have higher digestibility. So we just do time and then the number of whole kernels in the sample. I'm just gonna cut starch in there so it, there is starch all the way through but there is still moisture from here down and deposits it at the end last so lots of times I'll just whoopsies, take the kernel and I'll bite it to see where I get milk and I get milk just before the middle like it pops so you're you're close to 50 percent 